So let's just uh, get right on with it. Amen? Amen. God is good. God is faithful. And God has a plan and a purpose for our lives. Isn't that great? Aren't you glad that God has a plan and a purpose for your life? Amen? And you know, the teenagers are still trying to discover the plan and purpose. Oh yeah, they have ideas and thoughts and, you know, uh, things like that. But life, like Norma said, life is fluent, like a stream. Uh, you know, things happen, circumstances happen. There's people involved in our lives, you know? There's people involved. People make decisions. People do things. We can't control every circumstance and, and everything. And you know what? If we tried to, it would wear us out. We'd be frustrated if we tried to control everything. But we can put our faith in God and trust Him to help us through life, to help us through the circumstances we're going through. So we're going to talk about fulfilling your destiny by faith. Fulfilling your destiny by faith. See, God has a destiny and a plan for our lives. Amen. We must trust God with our future. And we need to fight the good fight of faith. Yes. Amen? With God, we can overcome the devil in every circumstance that is ever thrown at us. Every circumstance, every situation that comes up, we can trust God to help us to overcome these things. Amen? Amen. I know it says in 1 Timothy 6, 12, it says, fight the good fight of faith. See, the, the Word of God tells us that, that the faith is a fight. Amen? There, there's a, it, it's, if anyone ever tells you that the, the faith life is just uh, you know, an easy journey and you know, we can just float down, you know, uh, a gentle river on flowery beds of ease. They're, they're not being truthful because anyone who's trying to do anything, especially if they're trying to do it for God, they're going to have op opposition. They're going to have challenges. Challenges are not necessarily a bad thing. Challenges are opportunities to succeed. Challenges are opportunities to overcome. There are opportunities to, to be able to, to believe God for even bigger things. You know, David, he had what? He had the lion and the bear. And so he, he dealt with them. He trusted God with them. And Goliath was nothing really big to him. You know, and I spoke about that, you know, David and Goliath a couple weeks ago. And so, you know, David overcame him because he knew his God. And we, we need to know and trust God through these circumstances we're going through. Life is tough. Jesus, one thing Jesus said was he said that, you know, he gave the picture of storms. Remember hitting the house? One house was built on the sand. And what happened to that house? Anybody know what happened to the house that was built on the sand? It fell. But, but there's a house that can be built on the foundation of the rock. That's trusting the Lord relying on Him. When you do that, what happens is that, that you can stand. Both houses were hit by storms. Jesus didn't say that we weren't going to have storms. He, but what He said was, when you're going through the storm, if you trust Jesus, if, you, if your house is built on that rock, that firm foundation, you can stand. Your house will stand in the midst of the storm. Amen? Amen. So if anyone tells you that you're not... You, if, if you're a faith person, you're never going to have challenges. They're just wrong. They're just outright wrong. Delusional. Um, delusional. Yeah, there you go. So, we need to fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were called. And have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The good confession, of course, is confessing Jesus as Lord. But also, the good confession is speaking the positive. Speaking forth, even when the devil's thrown his worst at you, you're, you're standing strong and you're, you're overcoming. I remember those Rocky movies. You remember those Rocky movies? Yeah. And he'd be taking a beat and he'd say, come on, is that all you got? And you know, you know, that, that the boxers are hurting, you know. And, but, but you know what? They're just like, you know what? Come on. Hit me with, you know, hit me with your best shot. I'm not going down. Amen. You know, the devil doesn't like when we stand strong like that. He's like, oh man. You know, there, you know, the Bible tells us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. 
Well, His might will, will make all things right. His might will strengthen us. His might will help us in the midst of whatever situation. Yeah, the devil wants to throw everything at us, including the kitchen sink. But you know what? <laughs> you know what? God is bigger than the devil. God is more powerful than the devil. There's a little children's song. You know, God is bigger than the what? Boogeyman. Amen. Amen. Bigger than all these other things. Godzilla and all those things. But, you know, God is bigger than, than your circumstance. God is bigger than your challenge. God will help you overcome whatever you're going to be dealing with. I, I went, whenever, whenever we lived in Pennsylvania, I went fishing. Yeah, you all know I probably went fishing in Pennsylvania, right? I like to fish. Uh, I don't always catch, but I like the ca I like the, the challenge of it. But I went up to, to Erie, Pennsylvania, and you know Lake Erie flows. There's tributaries and streams that flow into to Lake Erie, and it's it's just beautiful up there. It's and but it was uh it was a season for salmon. It was a season for steelhead. Steelhead are a trout. They're, they're a type of trout, man. They're tough. Salmon and steelhead are very similar. They fight the same way. I mean, you, you set the hook. You better have your drag set real light because they are going to take you for a ride. You're, you're going down the stream. You're going up the stream. Your line's going every which way. I mean, they are a fighting fish. Now, when I went fishing, I didn't catch any salmon, but I caught two steelhead trout. I mean, they were like that. They were thick fish, man. I just, uh, you, you're worn out after a couple of those fish. <laughs> Trust me. They were, but, but it was fun, I'm telling you. And these salmon, well, the steelhead, I mean, they were going through areas that were uh, streams that were probably like three of these chairs wide. They go up, and then it would open up to like a big hole, and then there would be another real narrow part of the stream, and um, that you could just see them. They're fighting through the rapids. They're they're going through and trying to get up, fighting to get upstream, and then that's that's exactly what the same thing that salmon do. Salmon are known as a fighting fish. I mean, they 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 will put up a fight. And they have, they're, they're a fish with a fighting spirit. And that's, that's the way we need to be. We need to, to be like a salmon. We've got to have that fighting attitude. Salmon, they, they can travel over 2,000 mi 2, miles to get back to the destination of where they, they actually were born. They, they travel up the stream back to the origin of their birthplace. And as they're traveling through, they're meeting obstacles along the way. I mean, the, the currents and the tides that, that are pushing against them, the, the, the rocks, and there's even waterfalls. Do you ever see, see some of the pictures of the salmon like jumping up over the waterfalls? It's really cool. Now, if the salmon can get by us fishermen, they might have a shot, right? But, uh, you know, but that, they, they have a lot of obstacles that they have to overcome before they get up to, the, to their destination, where they're headed. Amen? And, and it's not an easy job. It's a task. It's a fight. There's a fight to faith. But, you know, one of their biggest enemies, the salmon, they, they deal with bears. And bears are there, and, you know, they're just waiting to grab them as they're leaping out of the water. <laughs> So they've got to overcome bears, they've got to overcome fishermen, overcome rocks, and even some really high waterfalls to get to where they're going. It really reminds me of a walk of faith. Amen? Because we are dealing with these things. We, you know, life is, is challenging. And here's the thing with, with the, the bear. The bear actually, they, they like the salmon's eggs more than they actually like the salmon. They're, they're more interested in Filling up with the salmon's eggs, and uh, that that was that's the destiny of the salmon is to take their eggs upstream, lay their eggs, get them fertilized, and that's the end of their journey. They actually die up there, but but their life that's their life. Their life is over at that point. They carry the eggs, and they make an impact on the next generation. Amen. They're needed to, to make 
an impact on the next generation. That's what us parents do, you know. We're, we're, we're there to make an impact on the next generation. Well, I'm telling you, teenagers, I'm telling you, graduates, it's your turn. Amen? It's your journey. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we're all in a journey, yes. but, but this is a fresh journey for you. Yes. And I'm telling you that there will be obstacles along the way. But you've got a God. Mm -hmm. I cry. <laughs> you've got a God who is more than enough. Amen. Amen. Amen? It doesn't matter what you encounter in life. God is there for you. Mm -hmm. He will help you go through the challenges yes. that you'll be facing. And every teen, every one of us, really, because I consider myself a big teenager, amen? But <laughs> ask my wife, right? Yeah, you are. But, <laughs> but, but, you know, all of us, even us adults, we are facing obstacles along the way. This, this isn't just for the seniors. This is for all of us. But some of us have been through some things, amen? We've been through some currents. We've been gotten past a few bearers along the way. Amen? <laughs> Amen? We, the, the thing is, is just like them, them salmon have those eggs, those eggs, in a sense, represent our hopes and our dreams. They represent um, the, 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 the future that God has for us. We're carrying those. And, and, the, and just like that bear is trying to, to, to end the life of that fish, Fulfilling its destiny. The devil is trying to do the same thing. He, we got dreams. We got visions. We got things. Hopes. And, and we're carrying them through life. We want to make an impact on the next generation. And the devil is trying to prevent that from happening. But I'm telling you this. When we trust God, we'll be the ones that make it to the end. Amen. Amen. We'll be the ones that, that finish our course. Amen. Amen. It's an awesome thing. Yes. You know, salmon are such a remarkable, remarkably strong fish. But I'll tell you what, they, they are not even close to how strong we are when we put our faith and trust Amen. in Almighty God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Almighty God. God, you know, God inside of us. Amen. Greater is He who is in you than He who is in the world. Te teenagers, young people, graduates, all of us, we need to get a revelation of that. You're not in the fight alone. You are not in the fight alone. We have people that are praying for us along the way. I know that uh, I had my mom praying quite a bit for me through some of my challenges. And praise God, obviously a lot of it worked, right? Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So, you know, the devil, he's not just trying to stop you. He's trying to, to prevent He's trying to, de to devour the eggs. He's trying to devour your potential. Mm -hmm. He's trying to, to, to eat, you know, to devour your hopes and your dreams. Amen. We're carriers. You're a carrier of something. You, you have potential. God has put some great things on the inside of each one of us. And, and even us, some of us who are grandparents, which I'm not in that at this point, but, uh, and it's going to be a while before I can claim any kids like that, amen? But, uh, you know, that we are not done with our adventure yet either. We're, we're not finished, amen? God has some great things. We have not finished our, our course. Amen, that's right. I like, I like what it says here in 1 Corinthians 16, 9. He says, this is Paul speaking, he says, For a great and effective door has opened to me. And there are many adversaries. You know? Yes, God's opening opportunities. God's opening doors. But you will always have adversity or adversaries as you're trying to fulfill your destiny. As you're trying to fulfill what God has called you to do. Amen. This is good. Good stuff. See, see, Paul, the Apostle Paul, he, he's our example. And, you know, he didn't, he didn't have it easy. He had a mission. God called him to take the gospel to the Gentiles. And it wasn't an easy mission. The devil was trying to stop those things from happening. The devil was trying to gobble up try to, the, the eggs that Paul was carrying. You know, Ephesians, Colossians, amen, uh, Romans. 
you know, uh, just all of them, Galatians. These, these eggs that were planted, they're still making an impact in generations after he's been gone. After he finished his course, he, he left a legacy. And God has called us to leave a legacy. Yes, wh whoever we come in contact with, we are going to make an impact in their lives. We're going to impact them. I, I said to Norma the other day, you know, sometimes Hannah, she'll say something, and it'll remind me of something that I've said before. I go, oh, see, I saw something. Don't worry, Hannah. You're all right. But, but you know, you... you you, uh, you, you can, uh, you know, make an impact. Yeah, there was a comment that, that Hannah made. You know, I didn't get permission to say all this. That's all right. But, but she, she, said, she said, you know what? It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it, right? Well, that's something that Norma and I, that's a phrase that we use all the time. You know, especially, well, I didn't really, I forgot to follow that advice last night. Um, with the umbrella, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you know, I, uh, whatever. But but, uh, <laughs> but you know, we make it an impact in the lives of our children, in the lives of our friends, in the lives of our family, and and there's a little part of us that we leave in them. Amen. Amen. It's it's a it's a great thing. It's. It's, it's a, a legacy. Man, let's make a good one. And so, uh, the Apostle Paul, let's, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Starting at verse 23. Apostle Paul, he, he said this. Are they, are they ministers of Christ? I, I speak as a fool. I am more. Now, now he's going to go through and, and, and give us some revelation on what, how easy his faith life was. Okay? You know, floating down that peaceful river on flowery beds of ease. He said, labor is more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in deaths often. From the Jews, five times our... I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. I was once stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have spent in the deep. Can you imagine that? You know, I, I you know, I go wade fishing. So, you know, I mean, I, I am aware. I'm looking around. I'm making sure there's no fins or anything out there that... So, you know, it reminds me of that dolphin you saw that time, Billy. But, uh, you know, I, I, keep, I do keep an eye out. And, and they all, all the guys I go with let me go towards the front, you know. They always say, yeah, you know, sharks like the white meat, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, but, but can you imagine being out in the deep? You, you're not just looking around. I mean, there's stuff underneath you, too. I mean... Paul went through it. He went through tough times, challenges. He was in journeys often. He was in perils of the waters, in perils of robbers. Wow. Talk about perils, man. In, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, even in the church. He, he went through his challenges. Over and over again. In weariness and toil. He's, he was like that, that, you know, the fish, the salmon going up through the stream. Challenges. One, leaping over this waterfall. Oh, there's another one. Leaping over that one. There's a, there's a bear right there. Got to dodge that one. We were looking for some pictures of bears and we, you know, I was like, honey, don't find any with the fish, with, you know, any bears with a fish in its mouth, okay? That's not the picture we want to get. Amen? But, uh, you know, it, it was, you know, it's an adventure. We, we've gone through, we, we, and we're going through things. Hallelujah. God is good. 
And so, so it says, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst and fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. And so, so we can just see how, how challenging this is. He says, who, verse 29, who, who is weak and I am not weak? Who is made to stumble, and I do not burn with indignation? If I must boast, I will boast in the things which concern my infirmity. What, what he's saying, that word infirmity does not mean sickness. It means the inability to get results. The challenges that he's... All those things that he just mentioned up above. The, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. In Damascus, the governor... Under, um, however you say that guy is the king. Um, and he was guarding the city in Damas in Dam Dam Damascus. There we go. Something like that. <laughs> with, with a garrison. And what was he doing? He was desiring to arrest Paul. It says, but I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall, and escaped from his hands. See, over and over again, one thing after another, people are trying, the devil will use people to prevent you from fulfilling your destiny. That's right. He will. I mean, you might have experiences, you might have to be let down from a basket, from a window. I mean, this is the Apostle Paul. He's, you know, I must have been a big basket unless he was a little guy. I don't know. <laughs> Gee, you know what, a, what an adventure. Can you imagine? I, I would be a little, after reading all this, I was tired just from reading it. Can you imagine going through it all? But, but the point is, is, God helped him to overcome all of it. Yes, there were times when he was hurting. There was times when he was betrayed. There was times when he was tired. There was times when he thought, I, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to make it. But God was there with him every step of the way. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. Every step of the way. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse 7, he says this, And lest I should be exalted above measure, and by the abundance of revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan. This was not from God. It was a messenger of Satan. Okay, let's just get that out of the way now. And, and he was given to buffet Paul. He wasn't given by God. He was sent by Satan to buffet Paul to prevent Paul from fulfilling his destiny, to prevent him from accomplishing what God has called him to accomplish. So, so in, in verse 8, he says, Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My strength, not, not Paul's strength, but God's strength. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I most gladly would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions. So he's describing the infirmities. In distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Because he, he has to rely on God's strength, Amen. not his own strength. We are not going to make it to our destination. We are not going to fulfill our destiny without God's help. When we feel like we can't go any further on, and we're we're just like in, in a just in a, there's just a, a a hurricane, life is messy, and it's just a disaster all around us, and it seems like there is no light at the end of the tunnel. God is our light. God is our strength, and we will make it. We will fulfill our Amen. destiny. We Amen. will accomplish Amen. everything that God's called us to Amen. do. Yes, we have adversaries. But you know what? God is bigger than anything that the devil will ever throw at you. Any, he's bigger than anything that life will ever throw at you. That's right. Amen? Amen. That's right. Glory to God. 
See, the enemy will try to prevent us from, from finishing our course but, and fulfilling our destiny. In 1 Thessalonians 2, 18, it says, Therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again. I'm trying to run my race time and again. But Satan hindered me. The devil is trying to trip you up along the way. We've got to fight the good fight of faith. We've got to trust God through every circumstance, every situation. Now, I'm not saying that... that that's all that there is in life. I mean, there are wonderful times and blessed times. Yeah. And we enjoy them. But what I'm trying to express is that God will help you even through those challenges you'll encounter. Amen? Amen. Amen. I love the beautiful weather. I love when everything's nice and calm. I love when there's an abundance of blessing. Amen? Amen. But you know what? When, when the enemy comes in... Like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard Amen. against him. Amen. Amen. The, the Lord will set that standard, and that standard will always get us over. It will always give us the victory. And, and God said, my grace is sufficient for you. That grace is like a beach ball full of air. The enemy is trying to push you under. He's trying to drive you under. And, and there's so much grace that God has placed on the inside of you that you, you're just popping right back up. The devil gets Amen. frustrated. He pushes you down. And you just pop right back up. Amen. 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 God's grace is what's going to get us to our place. Right. Amen. 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 God's grace is what's going to help us to overcome. That's right. <laughs> Amen. See, life is not a sprint. It's an obstacle course. <laughs> it's, it's a marathon. I mean, we will go through our challenges. Just like that salmon who who's going up through that stream. And, and you know, we're going we're gonna to make it to the end. We're going to fulfill what God's called us to do. Amen. God is good. God Amen. is helping Amen. us. Amen. Amen. In Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, it says, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witness, witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. See, there's weights that can hold you back from fulfilling your destiny. Every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us or, or entangles us. Think of an, uh, of an Olympic runner. They don't, they, they don't wear a lot of clothes. They, they wear very little light clothes because they don't want to be tangled up. They want to run like the wind. Amen? Amen. And um, this is saying that there are things that in life, there are weights, there are things that can weigh you down. There are things that can cause you to, to not run with efficiency. And, and there's sin. And the sin can, can prevent you from fulfilling your destiny. And it goes on and it says that we would run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus. Amen. He's the finish line. Amen. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him, He endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He fulfilled his mission. Amen. He had his Amen. eyes on God. Amen. What we're going to keep our eyes on Jesus, who is the author and finisher, the, the, the perfecter of our faith, and we are going to, to succeed. We're going to make it through. Amen. Amen. I could share so many testimonies of, of how I've gone through extremely painful things in my life. It would take days. <laughs> But God has proven Himself faithful time and time and time Amen. again. Amen. You know, one of the biggest challenges we deal with is unforgiveness. That's probably one of the greatest weights that we deal with. Because when you're going through hard times and you're dealing with people and stuff, we have a tendency as human beings to, you know, mark it down, to, to hold a grudge. We God, God, what does He do? He throws our sins in, into the sea of forgetfulness, and He doesn't think about them. We need to, to begin to, to, to forgive people and just throw those sins over there in that sea of forgetfulness. Just It's over, you know, Amen. and let's go on. Because these, these things, unforgiveness will, will drag you. You'll, you'll drag that along. It'll, it'll hinder you from fulfilling the things that God has yeah. called you to do. Yeah. Unhealed wounds and sin, these things will keep us from, from accomplishing what God's called us to accomplish. We've got to forgive one another. I know as a husband and wife, Norma and I, we don't always see eye to eye on everything. 
Sometimes she's got to forgive me. Sometimes I've got to forgive her. Amen? Amen. We, we, but we're in it. Amen? We're in it to win it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, like I said before, there's no such thing as perfect marriages, but you can't have a healthy one. Amen? Because you've got two imperfect people. Right. Well, except you. You're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, I know, Norman and I, we were really excited. When we graduated from Rama Bible College, we were really excited and you know ready to get on with what God had for us. And we went to to um, we went to Ohio to to help another couple that was they were building a church and they were pioneering it. When we went up to visit them, they had the church in in a, in a storefront a storefront building, and uh, they, they had like 30. I don't know like twenty people or 30. Th oh, 30 people. Wow, memories. But uh, thank you. The memory of the, the, the righteous is the blessed of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So uh, <laughs> that's what I have, Norma. She's my historian. But, uh, and my navigator. But. All right. But uh, so, so they had about 30 people there. By the time we got up there, they were no longer in the storefront. They were actually at their home. And they had like eight people or something like that. Eight. Good. I remember that. And, uh, Five were children. If I have more children, <laughs> so so um, you know Norman and I, we were just excited. We we got up there. We just wanted to help them build the church, help them pioneer. Well, the guy who was pastoring there, I, I was friends with him the two years that, that I was going to Rama, and I mean I saw them as like grandparents. I mean I got real close to them, and I just wanted to be a blessing. Norma was like, oh, I'm not sure if that's where God's leading us, but I'll follow you anyhow. <laughs> And uh, so we get up there, and you know we just we start ministering to the people, and we're young, we're new at all this stuff. And there was a guy there; he 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 hadn't been filled with the Spirit yet, baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so um, he, he he came to me. He said, "Do you know anything about the baptism in the Holy Spirit?" And I was like, "Sure." I, I shared with him about ten minutes of scriptures. I said, "You want to be filled with the Spirit?" He said, "Yeah." I laid hands on him. He spoke in tongues. And, and, you know, Norma and I, we're excited. We're like, praise God. This is good stuff happening in the church. But the pa I didn't know that the pastor, would, he, had, he had talked to him about, I don't know, like eight months about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he still hadn't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet. And, and here I am. We're like a couple weeks there. And the guy that he was working with, that I didn't know that he was working with him, got filled with the Spirit. <laughs> and, and so... Um, he, the, the pastor had some insecurities, and he felt like we were trying to steal his church. And he actually pulled Norman and I to, to the side and started reading some of his Raymond notes about wolves in sheep's clothing and stuff like that. And, and then all of a sudden, Norman and I, we look at each other and we're like, Are, do you think we're trying to steal your church? And he's like, well, yes. And, and he's like, I was going to call Rama about you, but, you know, I, I figured we could deal with this in-house. And I said to him, I, I, I don't even know how to steal a church. And if I'm going to steal, if I'm going to, if I'm going to build a church, I'm going to go down the street to a big church. Because I'm going to, you know, there's more fish to catch over there in that pond, you know. Um, but it really was not good. They started to isolate us from the rest of the the. the Eight members that they have, <laughs> and uh, you know it, it got lonely. Here, Norman and I, we had spent all of the money we had to get up there, and and we were like excited to do something, and and now the pastor's not even calling us anymore. He's uh, he isolated us from everybody, the whole eight members, and uh, <laughs> and uh, you know. Um, we, I mean, we would eat dinners and stuff with them, and that, that all stuff. It was a lonely time. So here we are. We're, we moved up there. We have no money to move anywhere else. I, I went and got a job, praise God. I found a job, and we, we saved up money. But I can remember one night, I was just with Norma. This is real personal. We were just laying in bed, and my heart was just shattered, broken. I, I can remember just bawling. Like a baby. She was just, my heart was just, just totally, I don't know, shredded. You know, 
Norma, Norma, she just held on to me and hugged me. Just, she just loved me. I appreciate that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we could have held a grudge. We could have got kept angry. That would have poisoned us for what God had next for us to accomplish. Amen? And so we left there. We had some friends that were in West Virginia. And in West Virginia, they said, come on down. You know, um, we're in a church. We're working with the youth. And, you know, so we, we, we moved down there. And when we moved down there, all of a sudden, you know, the first week we're there, they want money for rent. You know? We had nothing. We didn't even have a job yet. We didn't have jobs yet. They want money for rent. And uh, so we, we gave them money for rent. We're looking for jobs. Couldn't find jobs. I mean, Norma, she couldn't even get hired at Red Lobster where she had worked at before. You know, in some other areas. In Oklahoma. In Oklahoma. And, uh, you know, it was bad. We, now we ran out of money there. And no job. We're like looking at each other like, what are we going to do, you know? And, and then they, we get down there and they're like, well, we're not sure that, that we're in the will of God, you know? And we're, Norman and I look at us and we're like, well, if you're not in the will of God, we came down here to be with you. And I guess we're not in the will of God either, you know? And we were young. We, we, we really didn't we didn't know what we were, know what doing. We were doing when it came to being led by the Spirit. We've grown since then, praise God. But uh, it was it was rough. We, we, we were excited about what God had for us, but we had challenges to face ahead. And, and my, my advice to you is, yes, you, you can run into situations. And yes, God helped us get out of that situation, by the way. Amen? Amen. God, God helped my, my father is a truck driver. He, he brought his 18-wheeler up. We put everything in there, and he took us to Pennsylvania. And that's where we became youth pastors, and our ministry began to develop at that point uh, by the grace of God. God works through people. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and um, you know, it, but, but it was a rough start. Mm -hmm. There was obstacles. Mm -hmm. The people made choices. We... We were kind of at the mercy of some people. But you know what? God is bigger yes. than people's choices. Yeah. God is bigger than your boss's choices. That's right. Amen? God is bigger than your spouse's choices even. Amen. Amen? Or your parents' choices. God can help you overcome things. And, and people, it's not that they're vindictive. They're doing the best they can do with what they have, too. I mean, it's just, uh, it doesn't always work out for us, you know. We have to trust God every step of the way. Yes, it's a fight of faith. We've got to keep our eyes on Him. Amen. Amen. And second, I just have two scriptures left here. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians 1, 8 through 11. This is, Paul, Paul had... Intern he didn't just have external struggles that we talked about. He had internal struggles too. And in 2 Corinthians 1, 8-11 it says, For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of the trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. I mean, is this the great Apostle Paul speaking here? I mean... I guess it gives us hope. Yeah. Amen? I mean, the, he was just despaired even of life at, the, at that point. Yes, we have a sentence of death in ourselves. That we should not trust in ourselves. Amen? But, but in God who raises amen. the dead. Amen. amen. See, you, it may look like your dreams are dead. It may look like your hopes have fallen. It may look like your life is a complete disaster. But God is the God who raises Amen. the dead. Amen. We put our faith not in our own abilities. We don't put our faith in our skills. We don't put our faith in, in anything like that. We place our faith in God Almighty. Amen. He's the God who is more than enough. He's, he, he is the overcomer and He lives on the inside of us. Amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. we got an awesome God. Yes. So that we should not trust in ourselves, but in the God who raises the dead. Amen. It says here, who delivered us from so great a death. So he delivered. 
and does deliver us, even in the present. And he says, in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. God is a deliverer. You also helping together in prayers for us, that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf for the gift granted to us through many. And so, yes, we're, we need each other. We need to be praying for each other. We need to be ministering to each other. Amen? And helping each other. We, as a church family, need to realize that, that we shouldn't have to go through anything alone. Norman and I, if you're going through something, Norman and I want to be there for you and help you through it. Don't let it be a secret to us. Amen? But, you know... Find other people in the church that you have relationships with and, and bond together. Let's, let's go through these challenges together. We can succeed together. Our prayers will accomplish great things. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God is our deliverer. Second Timothy 4 7 says, I this is Paul towards the end of his, his journey. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Amen. And that's exactly what you'll do. As you're going through these things, yes, you'll face the opposition, but you'll come out victorious. You will finish your course. And on another, another verse, he says, I finished my course with joy. Amen. Paul finished his course with joy. That doesn't mean that everything he ever went through was always joyful, but God was there for him. And God, the same God that was there for him is the same God that will be there for you, no matter what you ever experience. Amen. All of us have a different road to travel. All of us have different situations and circumstances, different people in our lives. But we all have one thing in common. We have a God who is more than enough. Amen. We have a God who can accomplish anything. And, and if you think that everything is just dead around you, God is the one. Who raises the dead. Amen. 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 Glory to God. You are more than conquerors in Christ. God has a good future plan for your life. So step out in faith and trust God with your future. And then you'll be able to fulfill your destiny. Amen. Amen. You'll be able to fulfill what God's called you to do. There's anyone here who would like prayer. If you're going through something and you would like us to stand with you today, I want to open up the front for you and we'll pray for you. We'll believe God with you. Amen? And then um, we will let you go on your journey. Amen? <laughs> so...